Hi, everybody. I'm DJ Morgan from Listener Powered Independent KEXP in Seattle. Welcome to KEXP Live on KEXP at Home. If you are new to KXP, we are based in Seattle. We broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week with real life human beings playing the music on 90.3 FM in Seattle and streaming online all over the world at KXP.org. We do tons of live performances. And even during this time when we are quarantined, we are still connecting you with artists and live music. And that's what we are doing here today. So I'm so happy to introduce Laura Marling, who is joining us today. Hi, Laura. Hi. So nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for spending this time with us. Um, obviously, we're both in our homes. I'm in my kitchen. Where are you right now? I'm in my living room in London, and it is eight o'clock on the dot, which means it's clap for NHS for the next two minutes. So if you hear lots of clapping and whooping, oh that's nice, what that is. Yeah. that's awesome. We've been doing that here as well. It's so uh, it's so moving to see those videos from all over the world of hearing people thanking the healthcare workers. It's so nice. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, so you just released a brand new, beautiful album, Song for Our Daughter, just came out a few days ago on April 10th. Congratulations on that new record, by the way. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, so it was supposed to be released in August, but you bumped up the release date. Can you talk about that a little bit? What was the inspiration for that? Yeah, well, it all happened quite quickly, as you can imagine. Um, but it just seemed, it seemed like quite an easy decision. The record was made... I don't like to sit on records for very long and I'm usually forced to for whatever reason. <laughs> so um, it seemed like there was no reason not to, to put it out now because, you know, it might get continue to be pushed back for who knows how long. So we just right. did it. That makes sense. And now we get to spend this amazing solitary time with these albums like this. So uh, if you don't mind, love to hear a song from it. Yeah, absolutely. Great. This is a song called The End of the Affair. Max came around one day With very much nothing to say And so we sat in silence by the road It took a while to let through his head into his hands and said this is too much for men to hold if you were mine if you were mine I'd let you live your life Through my head into his chest I think we did our best But now we must make good on words to God Answer with a weary breath No need to say the rest I fear that we've been lost here for too long if you were mine If you were mine I'd let you live Your life The end of the affair I tried to keep us there Shake hands and say goodnight I love you Goodbye. Now let me live my life.
beautiful Laura Marling live on KXP at home. The end of the affair from the new album, Song for Our Daughter. Uh, Laura, these songs on this new album, they feel, uh, just from listening to the lyrics, they feel less that you're working through your own emotions and more that you've pulled out some stories and are relating advice to someone. Uh, does that resonate sort of with you? Yeah, I think... Um... I mean, I've always been in the habit of distorting the story for the sake of my own <laughs> sense of deluded sense of privacy, maybe. Um, but I think in, when I was looking back over the album, when it was finished, it's never clear to me when I'm making it, but um, it seemed to be this kind of reaching back, looking over these past experiences and trying to correlate what was made of them. Um, so, yeah. And each one feels like a really specific story. What was the general story of the the end of the affair? That song we just heard. Well, it's loosely based on the on the book, um, and I won't give away that I really um, spoiled the plot for some other people the other day <laughs> in that interview. So I won't do that. Um, <laughs> but I guess the thing that I took away from that book is, and also kind of my general observing of people as I get older, it becomes less about my story and more about like. The interior lives of other people um but the idea of a very private tragedy between two people you know having to mourn something that only you and that other person have experienced was really heartbreaking yeah and um yeah that was it makes a beautiful song uh you mentioned getting older you've talked about how you recently have turned 30 and you talked about how that age feels more comfortable um he, seeing you talk about that, that, that really um, resonates with me as well. I don't know if you feel the same way, but the day that I turned 30, it felt like a switch flipped and that you could sort of relax and uh, enjoy life a little more than it rather than it happening to you. Is that, is that sort of something that you've been experiencing? Yeah. I mean, I'm only uh, two months in, so I'm not sure yet. And 50% of that two months has been in quarantine. So I'm right. not sure <laughs> That's a good I've point. had the full experience yet. Um, but I definitely, I enjoy each year more. I enjoy, I enjoy getting older a lot. And I think that's, I think, I think that's unexpectedly because of the, the, the increase in responsibilities. I think being able to cope with them is, is nice. Yeah. yeah. I feel that way too. Um, so you've been a musician for most of your life, certainly all of your adult life, and I'm sure you've learned a lot from your experiences along the way. What advice would you give to specifically young women uh, who are entering the music industry and trying to make it as a professional musician? I think, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I think um, to not second guess yourself too much and to stand up for your voice but also, I think in reality, that means um, employing some diplomacy because the reality is, is that it's not easy to have your voice heard. And I think learning a diplomatic approach to getting it heard is useful. That's good advice. Um, we'd love to hear another song from you. Yes, I just have to. A very quick tune. Sounds good. It's Laura Marling, live on KEXP at home, playing new songs from the new record, Song for Our Daughter. This is a song called Strange Girl. Get all your records out and throw them all away. No one left to listen to and much left less to say. Are you working hard, getting on, still not getting paid? Stay low, keep brave. You woke up in a country who refused to hold your hand Kept falling for narcissists to insist you call the man You work late for a job you hate which never fit the plan Stay low, keep brave I love you my strange girl My lonely girl My angry girl My brave 
love, I love you, my strange girl, my lonely girl, my angry girl, my brave. Build yourself a garden and have something to attend. Cut off all relations cause you cannot stand your friends Announce yourself a socialist and have something to defend Oh young girl please don't bullshit me I love you my strange girl, my lonely girl, my angry girl my brave, I love you, my strange girl, my lonely girl, my angry girl, my brave. You change how you feel, it's good to break the seal and blow us both away. You change in all the time, starts to blur the line that's supposed to keep you safe. And you roll like a tidal wave And you roll like a tidal wave I love you my strange girl My lonely girl My angry girl My brave I love you my Strange girl, my lonely girl, my angry girl, my brave. It's Laura Marling live on KEXP at home. That was Strange Girl. There we go. <laughs> I was like, I lost you there for a second. Um, can you talk about the process of recording this new album, where you did it, uh, who you recorded with, that kind of thing? Yeah, so I did it with um, uh, two sort of long time collaborators um, that I've worked with many times before. And that's Ethan Johns and Don Monks, Ethan Johns producer and Don Monks engineer. And um, we did it in this really bizarre studio in North Wales, uh, which is like one of the, you know, one of those studios that still has all of the analog, the old school, one of those oh, old cool. boys studios. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I did a bunch of stuff at home in my studio that I've set up here. And um, and so it was a mix. Like it was the first time that I'd really um, sort of heavily orchestrated or heavily kind of arranged an album before I went into the studio because I had my own space for the first time. Um, and that's why there's a lot of, because, um, I had a lot of time and not a lot of instruments. I, there's a lot of like backing vocal arrangements. That was what I spent my time doing. Yeah. So on previous records, um, you would go into the studio and write the songs fully there in the past. I, I would go in with the songs written and then I would, you know, choose a band, my, my band that I usually play with, and then we would do the arrangements together. Um, basically, we just play through them until we sort of landed on something. And then the overdubs or whatever w would be an afterthought. But this one, I had more of a sort of, I had a, I had a palette that I wanted to use. And there's some beautiful string arrangements on this record as well. It's it's an interesting juxtaposition of it feeling very sparse and roomy, but then at times these string arrangements come in. Um, how did those get integrated? Those are all done by Rob Moose, who you are probably familiar with, even if you are not sure of that. He's done um, he's done Anoni and the National and um, and Bon Iver. He's a very talented guy, and he's very much in demand. And he very kindly did this in a rush, um, and I gave him no instruction. I sent him these three songs that, and he just sent back. The answer and that was it and then they ended up on the record just as he had done them amazing that's yeah. kind of the best sort of collaboration isn't it you get yeah. a little treat <laughs> when yeah. you get to hear them 
Um, you're obviously a really big music and literature fan. You talked about uh, The End of the Affair being based on a book. Did you have any other specific influences um, from artists or books when you came into writing these songs? Yeah, I mean, I always, I mean, I'm quite a magpie. Um, I'm, I'm forever underlining things in books and then discovering them, you know, regurgitated in the lyrics. Um, the sincerest form of flattery, I'm told. Um, but another book that I read, I think it, not so much the sort of the um, the content of the book, but the ethos of the book that I found really beautiful was the Maya Angelou book, Letter to My Daughter, mm. which is obviously very closely related to the title of mine, my mm -hmm. album. Um, and, and that that book is a quite simple, very beautiful collection of her life experiences and how they contributed to her understanding of how to conduct herself in the world. Um, so that was another big one. Do you feel like these songs are sort of your version of how you respond to the world as it was for her in that book? Yeah, I think Maya Angelou has a bit more wisdom <laughs> and a bit more, she's a bit more sort of like um, her, her life lessons are a bit more cemented, concrete. Mine are a bit sort of wishy-washy, <laughs> non-answered non questions. Yeah. I think you really, you never really know if it's concrete until the end, right? <laughs> While you're Thank doing you. it, it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, I saw that you're doing a, a master's program right now in psychoanalysis, is that right? Yeah, psychoanalytic theory. Wow. How yeah. long have you been doing that program? Uh, just coming up on a year and I've got another year to go. Yeah. How's it going so far? It's good. It's um, it's quite intense, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, and I've never, you know, I left school at 16, so I've had to quite quickly acclimatise to an academic discourse, which I wasn't familiar with. Um, but that's been a trip. But, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. I highly recommend looking into psychoanalytic theory if you've got a spare two weeks in quarantine. Have you been able to keep up with your classwork during quarantine? Are they doing online classes? They are doing online classes. They've been very good, actually. But um, it is, I feel surprisingly unmotivated. And I think this seems to be the general consensus. It's, I, you know, I find it quite hard to sit down and read a book at home. I don't really do that at home. I do it out in the world. And I was expecting to be on tour now, which is where I get most of my work done mm -hmm. in general. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm torturing myself with procrastination, but I'm getting it done slowly. I was just saying that to my husband earlier today. I was, I was saying the, um, the line between work and home is now so blurry that it sort of feels like purgatory <laughs> now that we're like yeah. six weeks into this. It's hard to separate things out and focus. Yeah. Uh, I definitely feel that. Have you um, been weaving anything you've been learning from your program into your songs? I Well, I sort of started the program after I finished writing for this, but I have another band called Lump. And the last Lump album was kind of based around surrealist writers. And this one's sort of based around psychoanalysis. So it definitely, it definitely has worked its way into things, but not, not, not this particular project. Yeah. Um, so since you've been at home, uh, I saw that you've been doing some isolation guitar tutorials on Instagram. How has that been going for you? It's been good. It's been yeah. good. I'm a, I'm a sort of, um, I feel nowhere makes me feel more old than social media. <laughs> and I'm very late to the game. And, uh, but I've been very, <clears throat> very pleasantly surprised by what a sort of cozy place it is, or it seems to be. Um, and I think because it's, just guitar tutorials it's a very clear boundary about you know what what I'm there to do and it's lovely seeing everybody learning the songs and learning a bit about you know it's mostly based around tunings because I pay, play in a lot of different tunings mm -hmm. is it does it feel different to interact fan with fans in that way where you're actually teaching them how to play one of your own songs rather than just performing and and passing it on after that yeah I mean it's you know, I've I, I, the the interaction sort of happens after the after the fact, and they send me something, and then I say good job or whatever. You know, something hopefully something a bit more involved than good job. But um, 
it is it is a lovely interaction isn't it you know nothing will ever be the same as playing live and I think seeing the kind of the live concerts that people are doing they are really amazing but in a totally different way it's just you can never replicate the experience of lots of people in a room I don't think yeah absolutely um when are you doing these tutorials so that people can follow along I was until recently doing them twice a week but I'm running out of repertoire so I'm going to do them on <laughs> Sundays um and I guess that would be at Sundays at 11 pacific time a.m awesome. yeah on, on Instagram on Instagram yeah perfect uh Laura we'd love to hear another song cool this is going to be song for our daughter some old balding bone You will ask yourself Did I want this at all? You remember what I said The book I left by your bed The words that sung survivor Lately I've been thinking about our daughter growing old And all of the bull that she might be told There's blood on the floor Maybe now you believe her for sure She remembers what I said The book I left by her bed The words that some survivor read So they may take you for all you had left You won't be forgotten for what you had not done yet So you wished for a kiss from God And you mourn in your childish loss Innocence gone but it's not for God You cut your way through it somehow They'll remember what you said The book you left by your bed The words that will outlive the day Is your mic off? Yep. 
my mic is off. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was going to be me, but it was you. Thank goodness. Oh, <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> anyway, I was saying thank you all so much for watching and listening. Um, this is Laura Marling live on KEXP at home. That was the beautiful title track to the new record song for our daughter, and uh, Laura is nice enough to take some listener questions. So while she plays this next song, if you want to type some questions into the comment box, I'll pick out a few while she's playing this next song and then we can ask her your questions. Laura, what do you have next for us? I'm going to play Held Down. <laughs> I woke up, it was four in the morning Clear as all hell that you'd already gone But you know it's sad, dear You know I hate to disappear But the days are short and the nights are getting long And I just meant to tell you That I don't want to let you down If I think about now with my legs wrapped around you How many times before have you seen me run? It's some cruel kind of twist that you'd leave like this Just drop my wrist and say, well that's our stun I was just gonna tell you that I don't want to be let down Get lost in the crowd Where I'm seen or unseen Say what you mean Cause we all want to be here now And we all want to be here down you sent me your book, which I gave half a look But I just don't care for and I cannot get through But you're writing again and I'm glad, old friend I'll make sure you write me out of where you get to I was just gonna tell you that I don't like to be let down I get lost in the crowd Where I'm seen and unseen Say what you mean Cause we all want to be here now And we all want to be held down Four in the morning clears all hell that you'd already gone But you know it's sad, dear, you know I hate to disappear But the days are short and the nights are getting long And I just meant to tell you that I don't want to be let down I get lost in the crowd to be seen or unseen Say what you mean Laura Marling live on KXP at home. That is my favorite song on the album. I love that one. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So we have some amazing listener questions, so many thoughtful questions. All right, let's see. Laurel Monterosa says, uh, I just wondered how you start writing your songs, whether you just play around with ideas on the guitar or whether a tune comes to you into your head uh, to sing. How do you write songs? 
Oh, I wish there was like a more interesting way of saying this, but um, I just noodle around on the guitar until I think until I sort of catch my unconscious off guard. I mean, that's not psychoanalytic language, but, um, you know, <clears throat> I sort of play myself into a trance and then things come out. <laughs> that's it, really. I never write lyrics or anything like that. You write lyrics after the fact when a song I, is fully yeah. complete sound I write them to remember them, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Nathan L. says, is there a certain aspect of a song you focus on more than others, lyrics, melody, structure, than writing? Uh, when writing, if so, why? And then what do you listen for in songs that inspire you? Ooh, nice question. Yeah. Um, I think as I've gotten older, I've worked more on um, the melodic components on the guitar and I've also had to let go of that a little bit because that can sometimes overcomplicate things and you can start writing very boring songs <laughs> so that's something to look out for um uh it's also good not to repeat yourself and I think when I'm listening you know we were talking just before we came on the air about people we admire at the moment we're mm -hmm. talking particularly about Big Thief and I think people like Big Thief and Aldous Harding, like contemporary people I'm thinking of, Bill Callahan, their their lyrical content is so extraordinary. It's like you're getting two for one. It's like you're reading a book and <laughs> listening to a song and learning something. So I, I'm, I'm definitely more of a lyrics person than I am a music person, but their lyrics and their music are amazing. So that's fine. Absolutely, totally agree. Um... Bilge NY says, Laura, thank you so much for your tutorials. They are so inspirational and guiding. What would be your advice to independent young songwriters starting? Oh, gosh, I'm a bit out of the loop in that respect. But it seems to be that you, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm the worst person to ask. I started 13 years <laughs> ago in a different world. Um, but I think um, if I was starting now, I'd, I'd, I'd be confident in my in my difference, I guess. I wouldn't try and emulate other people. I mean, obviously, I've built a career off emulating different people, but, you know, there's something unique to everybody, and you should try and hold on to that. Mm -hmm. um, and then piggybacking on that, you said you started making music uh, a while ago. Uh, Manasa asks, asks, asks <laughs> when did you realize you wanted to make music for a living? I wasn't, unfortunately, that sort of wasn't, a uh, conscious choice I think if I'd have had to think about it rationally I maybe wouldn't have done it but <laughs> I was lucky <laughs> and I started young I was like a kid on a bike you know I wasn't aware of the consequences of falling flat on your face um so I mean but in some ways I was you know my dad ran a studio I was brought up in quite a musical family so it wasn't too much of a shock for people that I ended up becoming a musician I guess how old were you when you picked up the guitar I got my first guitar when I was five. It was a three-quarter length um, Spanish classical guitar. And my dad taught me how to play an E chord. I remember it vividly. Um, yeah. And when was uh, the first time you went out and played a gig? And where was that? I think I was 15. Um, I mean, I get confused about it. But I used to play these underage nights in London when I was... 15 there was it was a big being underage was really fashionable for a minute in the early 2000s and there was lots of underage <laughs> events <laughs> and um, I think the first gig I played one of the first gigs I played was um, with Jamie T I don't, and um, Adele wow I mean that sounds like a really lame name drop now but it didn't That's feel that way lame. back then <laughs> yeah well uh where did you play with Adele that's amazing there was this place in London, it was in West London, and it was called Blue Flowers. And it was, in, and they had all kinds of amazing people who went on to greatness, went through there. And it was on Sunday afternoons. And um, yeah, amazing thing. That is a cool time mm. to be breaking into music. Mm. Um, let's see, Isabel asks, if you could give any advice to your young female fans, what would that be? Oh, I think... Um, I think it would be, oh, I don't know. Um, I think it would be standing up for yourself. I don't know. It's sort of, I, that kind of advice implies that they don't do that already. So I have to be careful about that. But I think, 
I think my best thing that I've learned, and I've learned it late in the game, is diplomacy. As mm. I said earlier, it seems to be my the thing that I've been thinking about most in the last two years. So I like it. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. I feel like uh, some of my favorite advice that I ever received was it never hurts to ask because the worst that can happen is someone will say no. There you go. I'm but terrible at that. Yeah. Opportunities open when you ask. Yeah. One last question for you before we hear another song. Uh, mm -hmm. What book are you reading right now? Asks David Blakeman. Oh, what am I reading? I'm reading a biography of Robertson Davis, the Canadian writer, um, mostly to get me sleep because it's a tiny bit boring. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I've read a lot of his books, but it is, it's like a, you know, it's a proper unit as well. It's huge. Yeah. Um, I'm not very far into it because I've been nodding off quite quickly. <laughs> Those are relaxing, though. It's a good way to go to sleep. Uh, Laura Marling, again, thank you so much. We have one more song that you're going mm -hmm. to play, and you have picked a cover. What are you going to play? I'm going to play a Towns Van Zandt song called um, For the Sake of the Song. Perfect. A tiny bit of tuning. Okay. It's Laura Marling live on KEXP at home. Thank you all so much for watching and for your nice questions. That was very fun. Oh, why does she sing her sad song for me? I'm not the one to tenderly bring her soft sympathy I've just begun to see my way clear and it's plain if I stop I will fall I can lay down a tear for your pain just a tear and that's all what does she want me to do I know that she knows that moments are rare and I believe that that's true then on she goes to say I don't care when she knows that I do oh maybe she just has to sing for the sake of the song She'd like to think I was cruel But she knows that's the life where I would be No more than a tool If I allowed her to cry all over me Yes, my sorrow is real Even though I can't change my plans If you could see how I feel not you understand Do you actually think I'm to blame? Does she really believe That some word of mine can relieve all of your pain? Oh, why can't she see She's been blindly deceived by her shame? Well, maybe you just have to sing for the sake of a song. And who do I think that I am to decide what she's wrong? Yeah, nothing's what it seems. A day to realize. She abandons her dreams All the words you can say are only lies Oh, why can't she see that to gain Is only to lose When all that you offer me are your chains Then I've got to refuse Well, it's only to yourself that she's lied 
She'd like to pretend there's something that she should defend with her pride. And I don't intend to stand her and be the friend from whom she must hide. But maybe she's still. And who do I think that I am to decide that she's wrong? Laura Marling live on KXP at home covering Towns Van Zandt. That was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I could watch you or listen to you and watch you sing for the rest of the day. But I'm going to let you go because it's getting late there where you are. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. Really appreciate it. Oh, it's been my pleasure. It's wonderful. And thank you all for watching and listening and supporting KXP. It's because of your support that we're able to do things like this. We are listener powered and nonprofit. So thank you very, very much. And we have more of these live streams coming up throughout the week. We do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We'll drop a link to our virtual events calendar in the comment section if you want to find out more information there. We also are posting live in-studio performances that were previously recorded in our studios before quarantine. So you can check out all of that on our website, kxp.org. And again, thank you very, very much. And again, thank you, Laura. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank you. Have a nice day. It's KEXP, Seattle.